Hi, I'm Jim Jones, a certified Emerson instructor for Fisher products. In an earlier module, we discussed the basic operating principle for pneumatic instrumentation. Now let's see how that Unlike cage guiding, the post-guided plug doesn't contact the seat ring retainer throughout the stroke of the valve. This allows for an open flow path around the plug, which makes post-guided trims better for use with viscous and dirty fluids. The last component of the trim is the seat ring. The seat ring is held in place by the cage, seat ring retainer, or some other means. It becomes the primary orifice or port through which the process fluid will flow. The interaction between the plug and seat ring is critical to achieving the desired leakage class. The assembly consists of two components, the body and the bonnet. The valve body is the main pressure retaining boundary through which the process must flow. The valve body contains the internal trim components which are responsible for changing the available flow area through the valve. We'll take a closer look at these components in a moment. We'll answer these basic questions about control valves. What is a control valve? What are the basic features of the valve assembly? And finally, what is the role of the internal trim components?
how to mount a manual operator, in this case a side mounted hand wheel, to this Fisher 657 size 40i actuator. It's important to note that this video only covers the mounting procedure for the 657 size 34i through 60i actuators, which differs from the mounting procedure for the 657. Well, that's our introduction to pneumatic positioners. Be sure to join the upcoming live interactive session where we'll expand on these concepts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the classroom.